awesome. Um, uh, prior to that, I uh, worked in social media and public communication with Honda and Acura. Um, I actually I do up in Zulo, so I'm not a stranger to the area. Um, and I'm originally from Chicago. So, um, so Put me on the spot here. Um, this is putting her on the spot in conversation. <laughs> I don't know if I have something quite exciting. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Something when I was little is that um, I don't know if you guys in St. Louis had the Bozo Show. Okay, so when I was in fifth grade, I was on the Bozo Show. There we go. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Okay, we are going now, uh, Steve. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Bauer, a partner at Flagship Pillars here in St. Louis, and I lead our social media team. I work on a number of consumer and B2B brands here, also on the UMSOL Digital Marketing Advisory Board. So thanks to Perry and team for hosting us today, thanks to Sprinkler, and uh, thanks to our friends at Nestle Purina. Social tidbit, I think I'll probably uh, fail in terms of coming up with something even remotely as interesting as the Bowser Show at the airport dash incident. So, uh, what I will say is a piece of advice for everybody out there, and that's that you will get more accomplished in the hallways of the conversations here than you will anywhere else. And I've already met some really interesting people. A lot of folks that I've connected with online, but just like uh, Carlos, I just met him in person a couple minutes ago, but we've connected online a long time. So make sure you stick around and uh, take advantage of the happy hour, take advantage of the networking session in between. Because that's really where, uh, where the power of social takes place. And that's, uh, not just uh, on your laptops or on your tablets or your smartphones, it's uh, always face to face. Uh, Steve, we're doing a new promotional video of these events. You're going to be on, so we will... I'm also available for hires. Well, you're an advocate, so we're just trying to, you know. Uh, so before Carlos goes, I have to say, so within um, the, the sprinkler of technology, we have different ways of having the members of our community get notified, uh, have us know who these people are. So as the names come across the screen, it tells the community manager, this is a client, so it would be like a Purina logo, this is an influencer, or what have you, this is a competitor, we have all that. Um, Carlos is beloved by my team, because he's got the special star, which means one of our most passionate fans, and one of our most engaged people, because the dude is constantly engaging with us, and we love him, we're like, ah, there's Carlos again. He's got kind of a big, strong rep. Uh, you may not be working during the rest of the day, but at least you're talking to us, and we appreciate it. So, Carlos, feel the same way. It's hard for me to keep my cell phone in my pocket, okay? So it's gonna be real hard throughout the course of the next few minutes. But, hey everyone, I'm Carlos Skill. I lead digital and social media for Save-A-Lot over in Perth City. I just moved to St. Louis from Jacksonville, Florida in February, or at the end of February, so I haven't spent a full winter here yet. I love St. Louis so far, but ask me in a couple of months what I think. But anyways, no, it's great to be here. This is my second social at scale event. Thanks to Natasha and the team at Sprinkler uh, for having me here. And I'm just real passionate about the space. I, I tweet all the time, even in my sleep, I've been known to tweet. And I think it's just real cool meeting people out there for the first time, you know, like Steve and you know, Brianna Smith that's out in the audience. Hey! And, uh, you know, people walk up to me and they say, hey, I see your stuff on, on social media. And I think it's just you know, really cool how this uh, technology brings so many people together. And it's just great to be here with all of you today. And finally, uh, Dan, welcome. Thank you. My name is Dan Wade. I am the Director of Action Asian and Community at Lockerdale, uh, which means I deal with all of our brand and media clients and, and help introduce them to the platform that we used to how we'll be social and uh, just make sure they have a really great experience. Fun social tidbit now that I've gotten time to actually think of a good one. Uh, I've done a one, one barefooted dash, but it was through uh, or on uh, O'Hare, not Midway, so I won't duplicate that story. I guess the most fun tidbit about me is uh, every year I help plan the world's largest scavenger hunt. So that's uh, a big part of my life. I think we have a little uh, so, until, until Google and the city of Provo, Utah break our record in about two weeks, which I'm very mournful about, uh, the University of Chicago hosts the world's largest the world's largest scavenger hunt every year. So, uh, I was a participant in my first year. Uh, we built a walking kaleidoscope. Uh, we built Trojan animals. The most famous item I've ever had is two kids who uh, flipped a coin, and the loser of the coin flip uh, built a nuclear reactor in the storm room. 
<laughs> they, got, they got two sets of, of, of notes from like, the, the International Atomic Association in the U.S. saying, one saying, don't ever do that again or we will throw you in jail. And the other saying, are you guys free this summer? Because we have an internship program uh, <laughs> that we'd love to have as a part of. So they weren't that mad about it. Gotcha. All right. Okay, yeah, I hate losing bets and having real good theory. It's a, it's a tough one. Yeah, it's sure. stressful, but I know you pulled off. Um, so we're talking about community man injection from more reasons. They put you on the spot before I'm going to do it again. And then we're current being here. So, you know, community management could mean a lot of things to a lot of people. And I think there's a unique angle to your business, which is that your regulated financial services, you can't just go out and like, hey, here's a great picture, have fun with this. Like, there's all sorts of stuff. So how do you manage a community, which is you're doing it at scale, you have a lot of customers, I don't know, you'll tell us how they're And then how do you do it in a genuine, authentic way, in the real-time expectation that people have around social, without getting yourself thrown in jail? Yeah, um, that's something I've kind of been thrown into that. I came from an industry, the automotive industry, which isn't quite as regulated, and um, so it's, it's definitely been a learning curve for me personally. Um, luckily, the team I work with is really knowledgeable, and I obviously got up to speed on some of those things. Um, one of the ways that we're able to engage with our fans and our clients um, in real time is that um, our customer service team um, pretty much manages our engagement for us, and they're all licensed. So they're able to, you know, they know what they can and can't say. Um, they're able to talk in real time to these folks so that we can, you know, really be present when they have a question. Because as you know, trading is really timely. Um, it's an emotionally charged topic. Um, it's, we're dealing with people's finances. Um, and when they want, when they have a question, they want to know something, um, and they want to address something with their account, it needs to happen right away. Um, so we're looking at the fact that we have that customer service team that we work really closely with um, to make sure that we're responding in an appropriate manner. So that, that's really interesting that you say that customer service team is all licensed, and actually Echo is, um, we were having a conversation before with a few folks where, you know, uh, people who have domain expertise are being pushed forward into these community management functions, and also um, there's a growing recognition that you can't just have social media on one line and that's it. You have to be able to push it back into um, you know, deeper into the organization. So, Steve, let me flip it over to you because you know we've seen a lot of you guys are doing a lot of great stuff with your clients and we've partnered with you on a number of those. Are you what are you seeing? Like, what, where are we in 2014 in terms of sort of this realization of you need this knowledge either on the front lines or rapidly available to the people on the front lines in order to create that customer experience in time with that, regardless of yeah, great question. So I represent a lot of different clients, many of which are actually here in the room today. So I would say that there's no one-size-fits-all approach to social, particularly to community management. If you think about the role of community management overall, I would say that it's to define, nurture, and protect relationships. Because ultimately, managing communities is really about the relationship between the organization and the members of the community. So if you really focus with what's the overall role, then you really need to dive into developing the right strategic approach. And that gets uh, very nuanced from company to company. What Karina is able to do, uh, that Michael shared with some of the cute dog and cat videos, is really powerful stuff, a surprise and delight. You're showing up in unexpected places and really engaging in conversations in a meaningful way. For other clients, the conversation is completely different. It may be to gather intelligence. We represent Boston Market, so uh, Boston Market actually used social listening and community management to find out that there was a small group that was highly vocal that actually were so passionate about the product that they took off their menu that they created their own group, their own uh, cadence of social content, and ultimately, Boston Market actually changed their menu and brought back the lemony garlic spinach just because there was such a high vocal conversation on social media. And it really comes down to being able to listen and really understanding the ins and outs of your community and not just being able to respond, but ultimately, how can you do something as a community manager that can have a positive impact on your business? Okay, let me, let me play devil's advocate for a second. So we have I'm, I'm a you know, big believer in advocates for AV fans and out there, and that's why we do these events, you know, we're going to see this now. But on the one hand, you know, not quite fatal attraction land, but you have these passionate believers at Boston Market. We love this product, we love the product. Okay, 
let's say that's just a small segment. So now you're going to put a product back on the menu that's really, you know, not profitable for you. Or most people like you. How do you find that balance? Great question. And what they actually did do their market research and found that because their menu tends to rotate on a regular basis, there was passion for the product, and it wasn't just that small vocal minority. Those were the ones who were really speaking up, but when they brought it back, they actually saw a, a sales lift as well. So there was market research that went into it, but the, the insight here was that the community managers were listening and paying attention to the conversation and feeding those insights back to the organization to help but actually, consider the change. Yeah, it kind of goes back to that like 1990 kind of idea where you had a bunch of people who were talking about it, um, and everyone else was like, okay, give up the video. I'm going to buy it if it was there, and then you have this small group of people who are like, I want it, and they're actually almost like the big brains expert representing the limited garlic chicken culture. <laughs> so speaking of culture, I mean, you know, I guess Carlos, the question I would have to build off of, of uh, what Steve just said is, you know, do you agree that your job at managing the community is to define, nurture, and protect these relationships, and how is that either different, A, do you agree, and B, how is the community different at a at a company like Save a Lot, which could also have emotionally charged purchases and things, but certainly not quite like Scott Trade. So, how do you guys look at this? Absolutely. So, I have a fundamental belief that social media is not advertising, it's not sales, it's relationship building. And while the C suite wants to see immediate ROI in dollars and cents, I'm looking for return on engagement. Okay, so likes, shares, retweets, etc. And with that being said, our stores are open, like many other retailers. Our stores are open 10 to 12 hours a day. And throughout the course of the day, there's a lot of opportunities for us to engage. There are customers that come to us and they might not be upset. Um, or they went to our store and they checked in and they're sharing their great experience that they're having shopping at Save a Lot today. So it's up to us to really nurture that relationship, listen to what customers are saying about us, and speak with them. Because social media, again, it's not an advertising vehicle. We're not in this just to communicate and sell to customers. We're really there to listen to them. That's really what community is all about. That's the great thing about social media is you can hear what people are saying about you. You can hear and see what people are saying about your competition. And that's one thing that I'd like to touch on. I'd like to know what our competitors are doing. Because I think we can improve our brand and we can improve our community management just by seeing what, I don't want to name them, but what the big box guys are doing out there. And, you know, I'm really proud of the work that we're doing at Save a Lot. We're really making a lot of improvement in terms of reaching customers almost within minutes of them tweeting out to us. Um, we're using Facebook as a way to address customer service issues that come up. And really as a whole, we're leveraging social media to go ahead and not only build that brand awareness, but really build that loyal consumer base. Okay, I want to play devil's advocate again. So, okay, someone asked Michael before, hey, you're doing all these great videos, how do you manage them? How do you, you know, connect to sales? So you're going to say, well, you know, I'm not sure, it's not social, it's not really about selling. And then I'm going to say, okay, and someday somebody's going to call you up and like, Carlos, I'm paying your salary. I'm paying other people's salary. I have the world's greatest, you have the world's greatest social technology platform on the planet, you know, that's not free. And why the hell am I doing it? What does it get? How do I, you know, how are you connecting all of the likes and retweets that are to real business value that, that, so that somebody will say, I'm going to give Carlos the raise he's asking for, or I'm not going to give it to him, I'm going to give it to somebody else? What we're doing is measurable uh, from the standpoint of you can track impressions, you can track in terms of the sales cycle, if you have a loyalty card, if you have coupons that you're putting out there, especially digital coupons are great, you can track when a customer downloads those on your website or when you engage with them online and they take an action, you can track that back to register. I actually would put that back and say, can you track print? And that's where you get in that conversation as someone that owns or leads digital or social for a brand, you really have to own the strategy. You have to be able to have that tough skin that you can look eye to eye with a senior level executive that more than likely is a lot older than you and really challenge them to ask, can you, can you track and measure what happens when you're spending millions of dollars in direct mail and you're sending this print circular that has a very limited life cycle attached to it? Because I can track how many people engage with our Facebook posts. I can track and measure okay, our efforts on social media. Uh, again, at the end of the day, what you're using these technologies for, it's to build brand awareness. Building brand awareness leads to engagement opportunities.
opportunities. And when you engage, you build loyalty. And by building that loyalty long term, you're able to increase sales. It doesn't happen overnight. And it goes really back to setting those expectations early on in the process. Can I add to that too? No. <laughs> of course you can. Um, you know, and I, I completely agree with you. I think it's something we're all working on and trying to figure out, you know, how do we prove our value to upper management. And I think the question to ask back to them is, you know, what is the cost of us not being in social? You know, what, what if we went there? The conversations are still happening. People are still asking questions. Um, you know, and at this point, it's just the cost of doing business. I mean, we have to be there. You know, people expect it from brands now. And I think, you know, to your point, it does, it helps build awareness and loyalty, and, you know, that's what we're all looking for. Uh, thank you. So, um, Dan, you know, I think we're kind of all in this, and since one of my goals today is to get tag and antagonize as many people as possible, I'm going to pick on Steve. Steve said, community management is defined, nurture, and protect. Develop. Develop. Okay. No, sorry. See, I was implicit. <laughs> this is the class that uh, Todd and um, But and maybe this is included in the so I'm not going to pick on But there's another element here the advocacy, the activation, all of that. All of these people who are pushing out those circulars on your behalf for free. You probably need to do that. So there's, there's another. How do you get these people to go out and spread the word, but do it in a genuine way so they don't feel like they're getting used by? And how do you do it across sort of the, you know, the variety of verticals that Carlos is in and across the board financial services and different schools? Yeah, I want to sort of repeat what's been already said, which is there's no one-size-fits-all solution. And if somebody tells you there it is, run away. Because they're giving you something that has worked for someone else, maybe, maybe they're giving you something that has worked in the past and I'm totally speaking but, but for us, it, it gets really into being being as in tune with some of our clients' brands as they can. Which means not only looking and saying, is this a media company, is this a brand, is this a professional athlete, but going deeper and saying, okay, this is a media company. They're political, going deeper. They are slightly left, slightly right, deeper. Okay, their audience really gets into foreign policy, but doesn't do domestic issues. So now that's your starting place. Figure out where their audience is in the most specific way you possibly can, and grow up. Don't ask them to become their biggest brand advocate on day one. This is a this is a trust relationship. Protecting gets you really into trust. If they trust you, if you're constantly putting out good content, if you're producing the types of content that they're going to engage with, that's when it becomes natural for them to share. If you have to force somebody to share, you may get one out of them, but you're not necessarily going to get a subsequent two, three, four. And that's what we want. We want brand advocates where if I put out a fine and put it on locker down, it's going to get 10 likes. I know exactly the 10 people who are going to start it and then it's going to go through. If I'm putting out content, I'm going to get an, an every tweet that comes out of an account says, please retweet, please retweet. It closed, and people stop doing it. And then the stats say, hey, if you ask for a retweet, you get it at an 18 to 20% high rate. That's a very flexible rate, depending on what you're saying. I would love to see the case study for, hey, if you ask for one retweet a month, I bet you get it. If you're asking for it once a week, once a day, every single time you're not, you're going to get retweets on the content that they serve it, and that's where activation starts. Figuring out what content your audience is going to latch onto, producing it, and making that where your strategy starts, not a peripheral benefit to a strategy that you impose on the top. Uh, maybe this may be a day for our next piece of content, right? because we have all these brands working on the platform, and basically we have data about what they're doing. So we might actually be able to chart that where the diminishing margin will occur. So I want to play with that. I, I, I would like to see that. If you give me one of the full offers. And if you put out a brand new GIF, I'll show you a CTR you've never seen before. I'm not going to go. All right. That's our, that's our audience involved, GIFs. Okay. Yeah, that actually give me like pictures versus GIFs versus whatever. You well, we're done here. You can get unbelievably granular if you want to, but it was touched on earlier. We are a mountain of data and few insights. The more insight you can get, the more you can get into an activation. Okay, so I'm going to talk to Steve for a second. Steve, you're working across that. I'm going to dig in here a little bit. So Dan touched on something. Dave talked about it. It's sort of been another recurring theme, which is like, it's almost like social requires us to almost, you know, look back at ourselves. these relationships that we develop. Um, you know, we have to do it, to your point, in a way that's really, um, you know, maybe genuine is overused, 
eventually, our community is going to resonate with our community. So are you seeing a lot of these brands going through this process of like, okay, A, what do we really stand for? Not sort of this internal stuff we're just telling them. And B, are they able, and, and at what point sort of in the maturation are they saying, yeah, we're really willing to commit the way Purina guys are and maybe some of the folks? So lots of questions in there, but I think the key takeaway from what I'm hearing that you're saying is, you know, how do you define yourself as a brand and how do you make sure that that's carried through in social? And I would say that your reputation is not what you say about yourself, it's about what others say about you. So the whole social conversation is really defining your reputation as a brand. That's getting back to what we first started talking about at the beginning of the day. Social listening is critical. You have to pay attention because if there's a disconnect between what you think your brand stands for and what people are saying about you, you've got a significant problem. And you need to make sure that you're developing the right strategies, the right content, and the right community management approach so that you're bridging that gap and you're actually getting people to understand what you stand for as a brand and what value you're able to bring to the conversation. And Warren, how's that kind of playing out at Scott? internal discussion, are people aligning and is your community responding to your efforts and are you sort of saying, aha, this is in fact what we really are, in a two-way conversation with the developers? Yeah, definitely. It's the conversation we're, we're having now, it's, um, you know, what, what can we learn and what can we bring? I mean, there's obviously a bunch of different factors and um, I think the fact that we can collaborate and social media can provide, you know, one voice of what we see the customers saying and what, what they think we are. Um, you know, is that lining up with how we're putting ourselves out there? Um, you know, we obviously have research teams and PR and you know, a number of other people that can look at a bunch of different perspectives, but to bring that all together and, you know, push the mind forward, you know, we're just hoping to contribute, you know, a piece of that. So, our approach at St. Watt is really being viewed as a lifestyle brand for budget and not even conscious consumer. I've seen over the last six months since I've been in the role that anytime that we try to sell stuff, so anytime we say our circular's out or steaks are on sale, even though we view that as good and valuable content for those consumers, we see very low engagement. But yet when we put out a recipe and when we're not trying to push the sales, indirectly we're positioning our brands and we're positioning our products, but we're offering value through, here's a DIY tip. Here's how you can make a meal for under $5 in 10 minutes. Those are the type of posts that we're seeing the highest level of engagement on. And we're seeing comments come through, which are invaluable because again, when you're listening to what your customers are saying, it gives you an opportunity to engage back with them. So again, it's really all about taking our brand and repositioning us from being just viewed as a supermarket or a grocery store to really being a part of someone's everyday lifestyle being at the center of their dinner table. And again, it's all about staying relevant with them because our goal is to get shoppers out there to come visit our stores every four or five days. So let, me, let me take that in a slightly different uh, direction. <coughs> you know, you're managing community, right? Now, not all community members are equal. Right? Maybe you say they're equal, it's like that's the, the CEO of his own bathroom kind of thing, but how do you decide, sort of how do you prioritize who you should listen to who's feedback you have. Somebody might tell you, oh, this is what I really like, and now they never shop at your store. How do you kind of keep that straight and really kind of reading out the stuff that's really relevant and, and treat the people who are, you know, your one k flyer, whatever your analogy is, first, you know, you can't see the flush out like that. Um, <laughs> generally very good. Uh, how do you kind of take manage that part of the food I personally take a vested interest in complaints. And I take pride in addressing those because I, I think at the end of the day, if you want to improve the reputation of your brand, it starts with the folks that aren't necessarily happy. It starts with the folks that are shopping with your with your competitors. So I uh, I take those to heart. I read every single complaint that comes through on Facebook. We take very quick action. And, and when I say action, from our standpoint, community management, we're not able to just wave a magic wand and do something about it. But we can listen to the customer. We can acknowledge them. We can apologize and also let them know that we care and thank them for their business. And, and really, that's how you build that, that loyalty and that relationship. Um, but we don't, besides that, we don't take preference over one customer or over another. Um, like Dan said, like Dan said, when we see that there are certain customers that are the ones that are constantly sharing our content, those are the ones that 
we do want to work with a more one-on-one -on -one basis, and we work with Social Forest on doing advocate marketing. So we'll invite customers to take part in our Save a Lot Insiders program, and um, you know I can talk more about that for, for hours. But again, it's really just embracing the folks that uh, are loyal to the brand and, and working directly with them. So Dan, in terms of the embracing the folks who are loyal to your brand, is loyalty the same now? Is loyalty different? Is loyalty used to be how much you bought? So there are different types of loyalty now that are managing the communities? I think there is. Um, especially from a platform standpoint, loyalty for us is, you know, when someone's got two or three minutes to kill, where are they going? I mean, if, for I would assume 99.9% .9 of the audience, or maybe even 100%, if you go into Chrome or whatever your chose browser is, push that and hit enter, it's probably going to bring up Facebook. You know, it's the auto thing. Uh, I had a friend who was sort of an early adopter into social who always was frustrated that Google kept thinking he was searching for Ford because app manager on Google was searching for the stock of the app just for it. And so for, for us, we want to be that L enter. And so loyalty for us is going to be very different. For, for our clients, it's things, it is things like commenting, it's consistent engagement, and yes, it does pull into sales, but there's a there can be a disconnect, especially on platforms that have anonymity. Someone may say, hey, like I, I love your brand, but if they're guest 4938, they can't possibly know, unless there's a creepy level of information, but they can just want a car, they can just shop in So I think loyalty does change, and, and you define it in, the ways that, frankly, you can find. If it's by engagement, if you can prove that they've engaged a lot, that's what you can know they've shopped a lot, and that's something, that's something you guys really specialize in, connecting some of those dots. I, I don't think loyalty can be singularly defined. I mean, you have to look at what you measure and define it that way. So I'm told that the uh, social and scale hashtag is trending in St. Louis, so please retweet, please retweet, please retweet. So there you go. Let's see how that works. Uh, okay, so I uh, just don't want to wrap up. So last word, we'll start with Dan, we'll go around. You know, we've had a lot of content. Give me the Twitter-ready version. I'm not putting on the spot now. <laughs> Twitter-ready version of, as you go out and you're thinking about managing the community at scale, what is that kind of guiding light and mantra and motto by which you must be or you will perish? I think Steve absolutely hit the nail on the head with this one, which is know what your brand, what you think your brand is. Be absolutely sure you know what your customers think your brand is. And if there's a disconnect there, work every day to make sure that there's not, because that's where you start losing customers. If if you are living your brand and somebody doesn't like it, you're not going to change your core values. Let's just start picking business. But if there's a disconnect, that's that gulf where you can start losing people who really would be a loyal customer, but you know, something's not right. And that's what so keep in mind that the end game matters, but how you get there and the strategy that's going to take you to the end game, that matters even more. You know, I challenge everyone in the room that is a leader, respectively, in digital and social within their own companies. That is what you need to be professing constantly is the strategy. How do I continue to improve the strategy? It's going to help us get to the end game. And at the end of the day, like I said early on, social media is not advertising, it's relationship building. Keep that top of mind at all times. So hashtag real talk. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll build off something that Dan mentioned earlier that's about loyalty. And my tweetable comment is, loyalty cannot be bought, it must be earned. And you mentioned United, for example. You also mentioned you've got overall great positive experiences with United. And if you continue to have poor experiences, whether in real life or potentially online, you probably wouldn't be as loyal to United as you are. So for community managers, brand managers, and everyone out there, trust and loyalty are earned, not bought. Exactly. Thank you. Um, so I guess I would say um, to remember that your community, you know, we talk about fans and followers, but they're all humans. You know, all of our communities are humans and we're, we're all people. And we want to be talked to like people and we want to be thought of as people. And the content that we're producing know, should have an emotional element or, or something of value that, that a person is looking for. Um, you know, personalize your engagements if you can. Um, and just remember that, you know, you're talking to another, you know, you're talking to another person. We're all connected.